Good morning, good morning. Today we're going to be talking about a blunder that people make on a regular basis with all of their good hands that makes it difficult for them to win maximum value at poker. Yeah. Simple as that. I'm here with James Romero, who's up all night playing a World Series tournament or World Poker Tour tournament or something. He crushes it all the time. How do you make a deep run literally every single day? I just play good. I just wake up and play good till I go to sleep and, <laughs> and I get the chips. Really as simple as that. Show up, play well, don't necessarily be in a hurry. I think a lot of people think, I'm going to go in there and double up or I'm going to go broke, and that's great. But, you know. Sit down, bring some good food, don't lose your mind. Uh, you can even watch a movie if you want for <laughs> a short period of time. What good movie have you watched this World Series? Uh, Stranger Things, seasons one through four. <laughs> it's a lot of time at the table. All right. Holds around to the button, who raises it up to 2.1 big blind. You call the king eight of spades in the big blind. Yeah. Perfectly fine and standard. Flop comes king, 10, 4. You flop almost the nuts. Yeah, I mean, I'm calling three on almost every run out here. We're at the very top of my range. I'm going to be raising the flop with king jack, uh, king 10. Um, so king eight's the very top. So we're just calling three. Very easy. I like how you think very far ahead. Yeah. All the way to the end of the hand. Yeah. Fortunately, poker's way easier than chess, and you don't have to think 20 moves ahead. Only like three. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, already, I'm check-raising better kings for the most part. Right. Therefore, this is like the best hand I have. Yeah. In my check-calling range. And you know this because you study poker a decent amount ahead of time, right? Yep. And uh, you, know, you just know that's what we're doing with this hand. There's almost no run out where we're folding unless it runs off an ace and maybe something else. So Ace, check, yeah. Something so, like that, yeah. So check-call down. Easy check game. Call down. We check. Opponent bets a third pot. Okay, my man's got ace king. Oh, uh, we're gonna spoil it for you. The yeah. opponent has ace king on the button. All right, we're gonna talk more about the opponent than us because we already know what we're doing. We're gonna check calling down for pretty much any amount. Yeah. Fine. Knowing that, given the opponent has ace king, he bets a third on the flop. I don't love it, but it's fine uh, as long as he's putting in b bigger bets on turn and river. He has a nutted hand, um, and he should have a ton of bluffs. He's gonna be raising button here with. 60% of hands, 55% of hands. He has a ton of bluffs. He has the absolute nuts. He needs to bet larger. I think a lot of people get it in their minds that they should just bet a third pot on the flop. They've looked at some either very simple, call them solvers, where they've only ran one or two bet sizes. Right. Or they just think always third pot the flop. Right. And that's it. But I think especially on this like King 10X type board, you want to be betting a little bit bigger to begin with. But also with your hands that are really strong, but kind of honorable. You also want to be betting big in general. Yeah. Like this one. And maybe your backdoor flush draws, maybe some straight draws, some random bluffs, jack nine. Yeah, jack, I was thinking like jack nine, as well nine. too. Because you love it when they fold, whenever yeah. you have jack nine, right? All right, so anyway, we own, well, the opponent only goes to third pot. You, of course, call. We already know you're going to call it down. Turns it to a diamonds. You check. Pot's 97K with 950K stacks. So we have a lot of chips to get into this pot. Right. So how do we do it? Um, well, he should know that his hand is the absolute nuts. I'm raising, like I said, all stronger hands on the flop. He has the absolute nuts. His range contains a ton of bluffs. He just needs to overbet or pot um, some some large bet here with Ace King. Something I have found that almost no one does at the World Series, except the absolute best players, is overbet turn. Yeah. They just don't do it. I yeah. don't know why. But... It's like they think we're playing pot limit only holdem or something. All the amateurs are using 30 to 65% bet sizes on almost all streets. If you studied our tournament and cash game masterclass at pokercoaching.com, you know this is a nice spot to be betting big with a, well, you can have multiple bet sizes, but big with hands like this that are almost always good but vulnerable. Yes. Common, he, common spot. His number one focus here is get all the money in on the river, by the river. Now, to be fair, you're a little bit too deep to get all the money in. It'll be uh, tough. I... Yeah. I, he can get I, a lot I, of money I, in. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get all the money when we're playing this deep, but you do want to get in as much as you possibly can. As much can. as possible here. I think some people think as well that if I bet big, they'll know that I have a good hand. Well, then clearly just bluff a lot. I mean, if he pots the flop, we can get all the money in. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Imagine he pots it. flop, pots turn, jams river. Yeah, we're bet jams river for 2x pot. That's all the money, but... His first error was on the flop, so yeah. It is interesting how that one pre -flop, or the one flop bet of betting a third instead of three fourths or whatever cost him a ton of a money. ton of equity because now he, he can't reasonably bet bigger on the turn in the river. Right. All right. So anyway, he bets sixty percent again, and I think a lot of people think this is a big bet, 
And to be fair, if your only options are a third or two thirds, it is a big bet. Yeah. But those are not your only options. No limit, hold them. The Cadillac of poker. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We call, of course, rivers of two. We check. Opponent should go huge here when a bunch of draws miss. Right. And it's almost impossible for you to have a two. Two X pot. Yeah. You got to go big here. And I think a lot of people look at this and think, only top pair. What can they call me with that you beat for two X pot? But the answer is top pair. Maybe even a 10 if you, get, X, if you get a little yeah, frisky. 10 X. Yeah. Because look, a lot of draws miss here. I mean, they all just completely break out. Backdoor flush draw came that did not come in. Yeah. So there are a lot of busted draws available. And anytime there's a lot of busted draws available, you want to be going big. Very big with the value. For, very, well, very for value and, and bluffs, because you want to be bluffing some too. Yes. By going this size, your opponent doesn't even get to bluff as much as they would like to, presumably, because they're right. going too small. As you bet bigger, you get to have more bluffs in your range. Yeah, the e EV in poker is generated by betting very, very large with value hands. Therefore, you get to bet larger with bluffs as well. Easy game. This time you call and you lose, but if you think about it, it's not really all that bad because if your opponent tried hard enough, they could have won a whole lot more money. Yeah, I was happy. I was happy with this. <laughs> it is interesting whenever you kind of get set up in a spot where you know you would have won a ton more money from them than they won from you because we all get the same cards in the long run to some extent, and if you would have won a bunch more than they won in the same spot, then you're just printing money. And this is one of the reasons why you can play a little bit wider ranges versus uh, recreational players is because they're going to they're gonna mess up bet sizes post-flop. Simple as that. Get in there, splash around. Make sure you get value. Please get value from your good hands. You don't get all that many good hands. Build the pot and stack your opponents who happen to be set up this time. Some, we're all, we're all, I think a lot of people look at these spots and think in their minds, you just lose in this spot. There's nothing you can do, but... Yeah, you're, you're losing this hand. You're check calling down, but you would have check called a whole lot more, and that is a win to yeah. some extent. All right, that's gonna be it for today. Where can people follow you on the social media? Uh, just search James Romero on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You'll find me. Do you think you're the most popular James Romero in the world, or like the third or the fourth? No, I've looked. I am. Well, number, number one ranking. Congratulations on James Romero rankings. You should be number one. Thank you. You're a, you're a good human. Thank you. You're welcome. That's going to be it for today. Make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons below. Click the notification bells. Good luck, have fun, and make sure you get full value.